I thought it was kind of funny when I was uh, going through my comic book shelf that people were talking about uh, the fact that I kind of glossed over really quickly the, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer board game. And um, they, they said, don't you hate Buffy? Yes, I do. I hate Buffy a lot. I hate Angel. I hate almost everything Joss Whedon's ever done except for Firefly, which I liked a lot. Um, but yeah, Buffy, not a fan. <laughs> not at all. Uh, no, I'm not going to go into more than that. But, you know, believe it or not, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer game is pretty good. I, I, I gotta, I've got i only played it one time, but uh, my brother's played it a few more times than I have. But it's not bad. Uh, you like it's it's what you think it would be is uh, it's a, like a cooperative game where I think you have like three or four different characters taking on the various characters like like Oz and Xander and of course Buffy. And um, at the beginning of the game, one of the players is the villain, and one of the the, the player will choose a role like uh, oh I forget like the the master vampire, uh, the the demon mayor, uh, things like that, and so. The villain has certain victory conditions, which is usually like kill everybody or just kill Buffy. Um, and so everyone takes turns. Everyone else is basically rallied against the villain character. And they win if the villain character dies. Uh, like I said, it's not bad. And the various, the various characters have uh, powers, and you get to run around the city and play. It, 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 it's pretty basic, but it's fun. Um, my main complaint against this game is that it's too easy. Uh, most of the time, this game is heavily stacked against the villain character. So most of the time, almost every time, in fact, the good guys win. I, I've seen this game played a few times, and the villain has never won. I, I think if I were going to house rule this, I would house rule it to where it's a lot more balanced. Um, there's another game like that, which you didn't see. Uh, another one of those board games where I absolutely hate, hate, hate the show, but the board game is really good. And that game is Battlestar Galactica, the board game, which is one of the best games of the year. Uh, certainly one of the best cooperative games ever made, which, hey, I'm as surprised as you are. This game is really, really good. I know I'm looking off camera a little bit. That's because I'm looking at myself in the monitor. I'm, I'm meant to be looking in the lens, so I'm sorry. If I get, to, if it seems like I'm looking away, I'm looking at you. But uh, Battlestar Galactic is a cooperative game where, of course, you are you play various characters on the Galactica, and your objective is to reach Kobol. Um, and so what happens is everyone is playing a good guy, and everyone gets a loyalty card at the beginning of the game. Most of these loyalty cards say you are not a Cylon, but uh, depending on the number of players and depending on what characters are chosen, there will be at least uh, one. There will be by the end of the game probably two Cylons. I think it de like I said, it depends on like house rules and the general loadout of players. But there will be uh, people who are secretly Cylons, and those characters will win if the Galactic is destroyed or they run out of one type of resource like morale, population, fuel, or food. So, um, over the course of the game, like, after everyone's turn, there will be a crisis card that comes up, and everyone will secretly play cards that will either help or hinder the effort to beat that crisis. And so, of course, the Cylons will typically play cards that will, that will hurt them. And so, it's kind of a trust game, where the, the good guys will be trying to figure out who is the Cylon, and when they find him, they'll throw him in the brig. And, of course, the Cylon character is trying to seem just helpful enough and waiting for his moment to where he can really sabotage the the Galactica. It's it's really ingeniously done. And when you've got when you've got people who play really good Cylons, the game is rather fascinating because everyone's accusing everyone of everyone else of being a Cylon. Nobody trusts anybody. It's awesome. Uh, it's not so good when somebody is not a good Cylon. Like uh, if somebody doesn't have a very good poker face. Like for instance, I don't. Like I'm not. A, I don't think I'm a very good Cylon. Although every time I've played a Cylon, I've won. Uh, but I, people have figured me out pretty fast, I think. I, I don't know why. But um, it's really a lot of fun, especially just accusing people and just trying to figure it out. And it's very hard. Uh, the humans rarely win this game. It's the, the, what, the bad thing about this is the cards can kind of fuck the humans sometimes, where uh, certain cards will advance the, the jump drive. Like, you can only jump out of the system when you've acquired enough jump icons, which are on some cards and not on others. You can run into a really bad run of cards where the jump drive just doesn't move 
for like six, seven turns, and that hurts because base stars are jumping in, uh, raiders are coming out, and the crises are stacking up, and the, the it's, it's bad, bad times. Um, the if there's a downside is there are a few balance issues. Like I said, this game is is pretty balls hard for the humans. In fact probably too hard, so you tend to house rule it to where they, the humans start with a few more resources, and um, there's no sympathizer. At, at the midpoint of the game, one of the humans becomes a sympathizer, who is thrown in the brig and may or may not turn out to be a Cylon. But it's basically uh, what happens to Boomer, where they find out that she's a sympathizer and they throw her in the brig, and so they have to decide what to do with her. Um, that part is kind of weak, because what it can result in is like three or four characters out of the six being Cylons, which is impossible. Like, that's that's ludicrously hard when that happens. Um, and what's, what's kind of... What, what it reminded me of is uh, there's an expansion uh, for the Pegasus that just came out. And this fixes pretty much every complaint I had about the original game. It does tack on about an hour of gameplay because there's... Uh, instead of Kobold, you reach New Caprica... And you have to fight off the Cylons when they attack New Caprica and then evacuate it. Which adds a new phase to the game. And I'm not sure how balanced that is, especially because it was hard enough reaching uh, New Caprica in the first place in the original game. Then you have to fight through an entire new set of encounters. That sounds really hard to me, but it's, it's probably okay. Um, it dispenses with the Sympathizer to an extent. Um, in this version, there are new characters... Uh, there's uh, Admiral Kane, D, Caprica 6, Cavill, um, a few other, um, Ellen Ty. And so there's a lot more characters, and there's also the option of choosing at the beginning of the game to be a revealed Cylon, or Cylon leader. So, like, you can choose Caprica 6, who is obviously a Cylon. You can choose, uh, I think Cavill or something like that. And you'll start the game as a revealed Cylon, but... What's funny is, the Cylon gets an agenda card, and that agenda might be that you're sympathetic to the humans, and you want the humans to win. So, you're a double agent for the Cylons, trying to convince the other Cylons that you're on their side, and you're trying to convince the humans, maybe, that you're on theirs. I, I, it's it's really kind of clever that way, I love that. Um, and it, But it, 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 it eliminates the, uh, the hidden Cylon factor... Um, there will still be hidden silence, but the fact that the uh, the one of the enemies is immediately obvious, and that that Cylon can infiltrate the human fleet and act like a human, and the the other characters can either mess with that person or not. Like if you know the Cylon is within the fleet, you can throw them out the airlock, and that's what the Pegasus adds. Is um, on the original Galacta, Galactica, you couldn't execute anybody. You could throw them in the brig. And basically the Cylon, if, if, if you caught a Cylon, that Cylon would then commit suicide, essentially, in the brig. And then reappear on the resurrection ship. Um, which was basically the way it always went. But in this version, uh, Admiral Kane can throw people out the airlock. And um, Cylon or not, it, typically you'll only do that if you suspect someone is a Cylon. But if Admiral Kane is a Cylon, then, then Kane will be throwing bitches out the airlock all the time. You know? Um and there, so the reason they added that is for the overt Cylon. If you know the Cylon is there, so like if Caprica Six is running around the human fleet, you can space the bitch, no problem, and she'll just reappear on the resurrection ship. But you know, it, it's fun that way. Um, but yeah, if the this game requires, I would say four to this place seven, but four to six is the preferred loadout for this game. And if you've got people who like Galactica. This is a really, really fun game, especially if you're fans. Um, yeah, four to six. I, I wouldn't do it with less. It plays less, but I've never tried it. But it doesn't seem like it would be that good, especially with like a traitor element of of a party of two to three guys. I wouldn't. It doesn't seem that good. But yeah, uh, I would actually like. I, I, I'll probably do this one of these days, where I'll get uh, some gamers together and we'll play this, and you'll watch us play it, just so you can see how it goes. It, it's really fun and. You'll see a lot of personal abuse and and just really blatant accu accusations of being a toaster being thrown around willy nilly. It's but that's part of the fun of the game where you're just like fuck you toaster and just, yeah. Um, 
love talking about my games. I love talking about my books. Isn't this fun? Um, we'll, we'll, I got to get this on the table. We'll play this. Uh, sooner or later, we'll play this. Okay, uh, mark my words. We'll do this. Okay. Till next time. Bye.